Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and subbing to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings. So y'all, this is Anna's Pass. So we're gonna head and go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> I haven't really looked at the apartment much, so I spent the rest of the day investigating it, relaxing. I considered checking out some of the phone numbers Remy had left me, but I thought it was better to keep a low profile for now. I found the kitchen fully stocked with plenty of groceries, though the variety was wasted on me. I hadn't been a particularly great cook in the first place, but what was mo what was more, I didn't even recognize some of the things I found there. Whether they were edibles that we had <laughs> that we had had back home that I just didn't know about, or something completely alien, I wasn't sure. But I didn't want to take the risk of eating anything I didn't know. After all, it was possible that some of the some of the comestibles might be fine for them to eat, but still be poisonous to us. I was also glad to find a shelf that was filled to the brim with a variety of books. While I found the subject matter of man, myth, or reality to be quite intriguing. I had to give up after just a few pages due to its exceptionally dry writing style, which I wasn't inclined to enjoy at the moment. In the end, I settled for an adventure novel about a dragon archaeologist who stumbles upon the remains of a long-lost human civilization, after which she is hunted by an evil organization who wants to use the found magical artifacts for its own nefarious purposes. While well, entertaining, I had to admit that it reminded me a little too much of the trashy novels we had at home. I certainly found it amusing that certain tropes were not really unique to us as a species, though I wondered whether this kind of literature had fallen into disfavor here at here as it here as it had as it here as it had back where I had come from. I was reading a particularly exciting scene in which the hero, Sheridan, uses one of the magical artifacts shaped like a pair of human hands holding a scepter with a globe at the top, to prevent herself from being crushed and ground into a bloody pulp by an ancient human temple's moving walls, when I suddenly heard the doorbell ring. Nope. Who do we got here? Sebastian, is that you? Not huh? Hey Lorem. I think. Yeah, pretty sure that's warm. Uh, hello there! W would you please sign here? Uh, I'm not signing away my rights with this, am I? I've got a letter for you that requires signature confirmation. I see. Looking over the clipboard the small dragon was holding up to me, I saw that the sender of the letter in question was Reza. There you go. I'm Lauren, by the way. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? What's this about? Oh, I'm just making small talk. Wait a minute, I, I recognize you. What was I doing for a bit? Wait a minute, I, I recognize you. You tried to do the same thing with Reza. Maybe I should report you to your superiors for your inappropriate behavior towards your clients. But it's important. Please, just let me talk to Keegan for a few minutes. You know how it is. If you want an interview with one of the humans, you'll have to get permission from the proper authorities. Help me out here, Keegan. As an ambassador, you care about the accurate portrayal of humans in the media, don't you? Then you should talk to me. Otherwise, someone else will fill in the blanks, and who knows what they'll come up with. Hey, let me show you something. A small dragon opened his bag, rummaging through a number of letters and small packages. Hmm, I think I lost it. Anyway, I wanted to show you some pictures of what people think humans look like. On some of them, they have like four heads and nothing look nothing like you. It's crazy. What are you, uh, what are you, Lorem, a reporter? No, I'm just... Do you want me to remove him, Keegan? Is what he is saying true? Yeah, I guess... I see. Sounds pretty interesting, though. Alright, you can leave your number here, and maybe I'll call you later. That's all I can promise. Thank you! Thank you so much! He quickly produced a small sheet of paper and scribbled his number on it, afterwards he sheepishly presented it with both hands. Alright, you got what you wanted. Off you go, now! Nope. Eee! <laughs> Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. I guess that should be all. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Right. With all the commotion, I almost forgot that it was still holding Reza's letter. Within the plain envelope was a similarly plain sheet of paper with his handwriting. When I started reading, however, I saw that his wording was so full of the, so full of the pleasantries I knew he hated that I assumed every word of it was faked as to conceal its true intent. He did mention I'd know what to do, but I was unsure of how I was supposed to, de supposed to, decode, I was supposed to decode the letter's secret message. I didn't remember ever having a conversation about this topic with him, yet he still relied on me to remember whatever it was that I was missing, or he thought I would just be able to figure it out on my own. This is what I said. This is what it said. Hello, dear friend. One second, y'all. Water time. Okay. I hope this letter find. I hope this letter reached you swiftly and in good condition. Unfortunately, we were not able to catch up earlier, so I wanted to write you this letter. How have you been these last few years? What have you been doing? How's the family? 
feel like there's so much we should talk about since we have not seen each other much recently. At least we have a chance to do so in this form. Quite an exciting venture we're on now, right? How have you liked it here so far? Made any dragon friends yet? Haha. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be looking forward to your reply soon. Best regards, Reza. Various things came to mind. Only reading certain words or letters was one that I thought of immediately, but I couldn't make out anything other than anything after trying to find a system within its array of letters and lines. Maybe I had to look more carefully. Lines, of course. Maybe it was supposed to. Uh, maybe I was supposed to read between them. I didn't have an implement on me, which, uh, which, which I would have been able to, which I would have been able to read fine print. Though with some with this handwritten letter, I doubted Reza could have done anything of the sort. Maybe you referred to the fact that we were both given an apartment. Considering the things they provided for us, maybe I just had to find the right object to decode the message. There are many everyday items here, though, and of course I still had no idea what in particular I was looking for. The bookshelf. The bookshelf was stocked with quite a variety of books on t different topics. The individual look behind the books. Maybe Reza left me another message here at some point. He could have known that I was going to live here, so I suppose it's possible that he helped with the preparations and hid something for me to find. Nope, even after removing every single book from the shelf, there's still no indicator of anything that would help me decode his secret message. But even if Reza did leave a hint, this could have been anywhere in the apartment, and not just on the bookshelf. An individual book. Maybe it has something to do with the books. The shelf is full of them, but I suppose the hint could be hidden inside one of them. The draconic desire. No. I was so young and naive, but naive back then. Barely having reached the age at which the arduous process of finding a mate, settling down, and starting a family became expected. Yet none of my peers interested myself. They were childish and crude and uncultured. I was lost in a sea of uncertainty, drifting, hoping to be found by the one, by the one, one day. And then I did. How fast time flies when you're happy. I can't believe this is two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I found the one, my truest soulmate there ever could be. Like a wrecking ball, he came out of nothing, breaking all the barriers and entered my life. Two weeks ago, I was nothing. Today, I'm the happiest dragon alive. Who knew that out of all the people alive, it would only take the right one to write my to, and to the right life to write life itself? Who knew that to meet the perfect one, the only one, you, the only thing you needed was? I don't think there's anything in here. And who let this? And who let this mess ever get to print? Sheesh. Uh, let's see. Assault of the humanoids from outer space. There's a cat on the cover. Arc one. It was a dark and stormy night. Relentlessly pouring was the rain outside, periodically interrupted the loud echo of thunder again and again. So quick had its roaring staccato become that it almost seemed like someone was pounding against the door. No, someone really was pounding on the door right now. The door swiftly opened, and the moment for which the house's owner had waited decades finally was here. Not on the field of battle do you meet me, human scum, but in the field, in the, but in the comforts of my own home do you seek to assassinate me? Feel my wrath! May it lead you to a slow and painful death! Screamed at the top of his lungs. Your resistance from it, your resistance will only temper my blade, inferior creature. Taste my blade and die from it. The reply of Riley came from the human invader standing within the door frame. Hey, you know, water time. This is so silly, so cheesy. All right. Hero quickly stabbed him with a magi pen, a lethal hit which caused the human invader to slump to the ground instantly. His last words being. Damn you, hero! This is not over yet. Well, he melted into a red blotch, blo blotching up hero's carpet. Hero looked up into the sky and realized all the thunder and rain had really been the UFOs of the invaders, numerous enough as to rival the raindrops falling from the sky. This is the moment when he knew it was too late. This meant war. Really? An invasion by human aliens? Is that what they think we're like? Born to serve. Huh. Chapter 1. Rise from the Ashes. From the day I was born, I knew it was destined for greatness. As a member of the, Av as a member of the Avdonian household, nothing less was expected from me. I thought my father, Avdon VI, made sure of that. My mother, however, was a worm. Not literally, mind you. She was not some sort of annelid squirming beneath the earth and living in filth. No, she was just what I would describe as the lowest form of life. Not concerning herself with matters of any importance, she instead sought to base her existence on superficialities. Not that it mattered much, as I grew to hate them both equally. For those who may want to critique me now for saying this, I have no doubt of my, I have no doubt of my father's political achievements. Yet only those who had to live with him know that these successes came at the price of his very soul. 
An empty shell of a dragon driven by nothing but his performance as a politician, not as a father. Politician, huh? I wonder what their actual government is like. Rice and prayer. Preface. In the f in the four in the fourteen hundred and twenty second year since our ascent to sentience, a most extraordinary chain of events led to the most extraordinary of circumstances in our politics and society. These events have since been buried in history, till I stumbled upon the records of these tumultuous times. I have taken it upon myself to dramatize the events in a manner that is both accurate to history as well as entertaining to any reader who might have an interest in such stories. This is not just for my own personal gain, as I hope to make the story available to a larger audience than just a few who have permission to visit the archives. I believe the wisdom to be gained from the ensuing tale to be more relevant to us now than ever. Which books are you looking at? He has no comment on that book. X-Men Sphere and How to Use It. Come in handy. As a manual meant for the general populace, this booklet intends to bring you, the valued reader, close to the uses and joys as X-Men Sphere might bring. I have taken utmost care to use simple language and instructions to remove the well-known barrier between individuals and the knowledge of proper use of this most wondrous device. For interested parties, a chapter about the X-Men Sphere's history and ideas for advanced applications can be found later in the book. Quick Start Guide Step 1. Place your X-Men Sphere on a flat, stable surface. Make sure that the surface is indeed stable and flat. Expert Tip Use a spirit level in order to determine if a surface is absolutely horizontal in order to prevent the X-Men Sphere from rolling off the table unintendedly. Step 2. Plug your X-Men Sphere into any fitting household outlet. Warning. Make sure the X-Men Sphere's power switch is in the off position prior to plugging it in. Step 3. Locate the power switch on the X-Men Sphere. This step may introduce some difficulties as many different models of X-Men Spheres exist, with varying methods of turning them on and off. When in doubt, please contact your X-Men Sphere's manufacturer to help with this step if necessary. Now, now I know how to work an X-Men Sphere, whatever that is. Go back. Go back. Get the book, look in the bathroom. Look inside the cabinet. No razors. There's some pain meds, though. Go back. Inside the shower. Ha! Huh, no shampoo to be found anywhere, of course. And no hint either, just some body wash. Let's go to the kitchen. Look in the fridge. Plenty of stuff in here. Let's see. Alright, y'all. Water time. Alrighty. Look at the meat. It's just a slab of meat. Nothing special about it. Look at the milk. Pasteurized. At least they got that down. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope, just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope, just a regular egg. <laughs> I wonder if you could just keep cracking eggs. Oh my god, wait, you just keep- how many eggs are in this house? Oh my god, there's eggs everywhere, it's just a fridge full of eggs! Ah, huh, well those are all of them. Guess I just wasted a perfectly good- <laughs> you can- You just wasted a perfectly good batch of eggs, I love it. Examine an unlabeled container. It's an unlabeled container with some sort of white liquid inside. Well, here goes nothing- he's just losing his mind in this house! It's salty. Fridge. Plenty of stuff in there. Go back. Look in the pantry. Some fruits and veggies here. What should I look at? Date. If I put it on the floor and then step on it, what would happen? I'd be going on a date. <laughs> no, there's no hint here. A uh, fig. What do I know about figs? Quite a bit, actually. Figs are ripe with history and still I enjoy some cultural significance, especially in religious circles. For example, they are the leaves in which Adam and Eve covered themselves up with in the Bible's book of Genesis. It also happens to be the kind of tree Buddha achieved enlightenment under. Not only that, but it also mentioned in Greek mythology. Isn't that fascinating? But wait, there's more. The influence of figs also extends towards words, phrases, and sayings we still use today. Take the word sycophant, for example, which comes from a Greek expression meaning someone who shows the fig, which was a vulgar gesture at the time, or I don't give a fig, which of course is a figure of speech. <laughs> it might as well be said that the influence of figs is as far-reaching as its, as its fruit is succulent. Figuratively speaking, of course, that is. I'm afraid nothing of this actually helps with Reza's letter, though. Which look at next pair. There are two of them. What a nice pair. <laughs> Great. So, Daddy Grape finds his kid crying and asks, What's wrong, kid? But through all the tears, the kid couldn't get a single word out. Eventually, Daddy had enough, so he said, Stop with- No, I won't say it. It wasn't a good joke anyway. Yes, God, save me from this. I'm just looking at random objects and food. What is happening to Keegan? 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Certificate can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.